is risen. He is risen. He is risen. All right, now that we've got you awake, <laughs> happy Easter. Let's start with giving thanks, shall we? Oh, Lord, thank you for Easter Sunday. Thank you for this beautiful morning that we've been able to gather and, and uh, have a wonderful sunrise worship service. And Lord, we pray your blessing over this service, over our time together. Lord, we want to focus on you today. This is your day. Because it's your day, it's also our day. This is our freedom day. This is our salvation day. This is the day you gave us life when you walked out of the tomb. And so, Lord, with grateful hearts, we gather to sing to you, to pray to you, and to be in your presence. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, he is risen. He is risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Amen. They say anything that we say. That's right. All right. That could be dangerous. <laughs> Not everything. Okay. So after the announcement, we have a we have a request for 322, up from the grave. Oh, I thought okay. that meant that much money. Yeah. 322. Could, that no, that's just starting. That's, that's just that's, the beginning. That's, that's just the, the beginning. Whole yeah. yeah, that's not the whole offer. I thought yeah. that was my cut, maybe. Okay. If you're if you're going to be coming to the nine or the 10:30, you need to know that the social hour in between nine and 10:30 is going to be on the patio because the Smoot Hall is set up for our luncheon today. And if you've already bought a ticket, you're in luck. If you haven't, uh, there aren't going to be any tickets sold at the door. So if you want to wait till the end and see if there's any scraps, I mean, any food left over, <laughs> <laughs> then you might be able to squeeze in. But how many do we have reserve reservations for, Susie? 130. 130. All right. Wow. 130 of my closest friends <laughs> here today. And... Uh, also, the spiritual gifts class, some of you are in that class on Wednesdays now. Instead of meeting at 10, we're going to back it up to 9.30. We kind of decided on that with everybody that was present this last week. So just so you know and remember that, to come at 9.30 this next week. We have a special speaker at TNT from Heifer International. And her a little bit about her is there in your uh, bulletin, if you care to read that in the middle part, but not during the sermon, but you can read it later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And let me Thank encourage you, you to... Take these home and use them as your prayer guides and as your kind of a guide to some of the activities that we have. This is the last of the weekly Amazing Grace. We won't, we'll have them once a month in the summer. So uh, starting with the third Wednesday, excuse me, yeah, the third Wednesday of each month, we'll have one meal with a volunteer cook per month as opposed to having them every <coughs> week. A lot of our volunteer cooks uh, are retired, and they retire from doing this every month and every week in the summer, so we're going to let them do that. John, did you did, did I tell you about the little girl that had to go to the doctor? No, you did not. It, it has to do with Easter. She was just, it was before Easter, and she had been feeling very good, so she went to the doctor, and the doctor said, let me see in your mouth, and she was real nervous, and he said, is that Big Bird in your mouth? She goes, no, no. He goes, looked in her ear. He said, is that, is that Bernie in your ear, or Ernie in your ear? No, no. And then she listened to his heart. He said, oh, is that the cookie monster in your heart? She said, no, no, the cookie monster is on my shorts, but Jesus is in my heart. <laughs> so that's my story. There you go. I'm sticking with it. All right, we're going to sing. Easter is a great time to sing, and the first one we're going to sing is 322. 322. Three, two, two. First and last verses. 322. Yeah. Right. 
the choir for 9 o'clock and 10.30 when the choir retires. Is there anybody here that sings in the choir normally? They're still, they're still rehearsing today. But uh, they're going to, I think, at the end of May is their last, last uh, time in the, in the choir loft for the summertime. Okay, let me see. I started over here last week on the right. Yes, in the back. 364, which is? He lives. Because he lives. Because he lives. 364, because he lives.
77. One and four. That's a good Easter song. One and four. six o'clock to, to decorate the cross. All right. Doesn't the flowered cross look beautiful? Only God can turn a rugged old cross into a beautiful symbol of freedom and faith. And uh, we, we did that at six o'clock. I, I only put three flowers on, but I can tell you which ones they were. Yeah. That was probably the ones that fell down here on the floor. This cross leaves a trail wherever it goes, and so does the cross of Christ. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right. For all you late bloomers that didn't make it at 6 o'clock, you get to enjoy the cross anyway. All right. We have on our list today to pray for Alice Colson and hospice care. Also, um, for Mac and Pat McDonald, prayers for uh, her daughters having a knee replacement in the morning, Kathy. So we want to pray for Kathy going over to Boswell around noon tomorrow to have a, a knee replacement. Also, uh, a friend of Rod's uh, I want to pray for this morning. And also, uh, is that Jim Martin? Is that the friend? Okay. Jim Martin's having back surgery. We want to continue to pray for uh, Pastor Linda's daughter, Kim, who had back surgery on Friday. And doing really well. Doing really well and very pleased. Uh, after a very delicate uh, and lengthy operation on Friday. So there's a great many prayers that have been answered there. Uh, others that you'd like to mention at this time, anybody else that you'd like to share, uh, you just raise your hand and make a request. Jan? My, name, my neighbor, her name is Mona Powers. She's going to be 102 next week. And she's finally not, she's finally, she's a hospital. Well, she has certainly beaten the odds to make it this long. Yes, Bo? We need to keep our military and our first responders and our friends. John was mentioning some uh, 200 and some people have been killed in Sri Lanka 
in some church bombings over there. All right. Any others over here? Yes. I'd just like to say thank you for everyone's prayers. Okay. Two weeks after pancreatic surgery, I'm here. Good for you, Barbara. God bless you. So good to see you here. That was a major, major surgery, and uh, that's right. You're several pounds lighter after surgery, huh? Okay, all right. My doctors never said that about me. <laughs> concerned about me losing too much. Yeah. We certainly will continue to pray for Barbara's healing and for her husband, Matt, as they're kind of separated from each other during her recovery. All right, any others that you'd like to mention? So, okay, let's pray together. Wonderful God, on this Easter Sunday, we just thank you for this wonderful miracle of Jesus coming back to us from the dead after sacrificing himself that we might have eternal life and forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for the cross. We thank you for the, the willingness of our Lord Jesus Christ to go to that cross for us. Help us to never forget the price that's been paid for us to be able to have the forgiveness that we have, that we could not have done for ourselves what he did for us. And because of his death, Lord, we can live forever but because of his resurrection, we have hope, we have joy, we have a future to look forward to. We need not fear death any longer, but we can celebrate, Lord, in the very presence of God because of what Jesus has already shown us is possible and what lays in wait for us. We pray especially, Lord, for Alice, that she would continue to heal and to comfort her, for uh, Mac and Pat's daughter, Kathy, as she goes through knee surgery tomorrow. We pray for Jim Martin, Lord, as his back surgery approaches. We pray for Kim uh, Pangalos as she continues to heal from back surgery. For Mona, Lord, as she enters hospice at 102. For our military, Lord, our first responders. And for those, Lord, who have been affected by the bombings and the deaths in Sri Lanka. We thank you, Lord, for Barbara and for her successful surgery. We pray that you'd continue to heal her body and return her strength and that you would continue to kindle the love between she and Matt as they have to be apart. We pray, Lord, so much for your love for us. We thank you that you have given us this day to celebrate this wonderful Easter that we call it, that we are Easter people, that we do not live in the grave any longer, that you have overcome everything that we will face on this earth and even more. Help us, Lord, to rejoice in that fact and to know that Jesus is our Savior and our Lord. I pray, Lord, for anyone here today who has questioned in their mind whether they have yet to receive Christ, that this might be the day that they would say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and live in me and be my Lord and my Savior, that this might be the day that we all can rejoice in our own salvation of what Jesus has done for us. And as we do so, we pray the prayer that he gave to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brother John, you're here. I'm here. We're glad you're here. <laughs> My alarm went off, didn't go off this morning. I shared with, I was, I was, I think, six minutes late to the sunrise service. But I was explaining to them that I learned something new. There's, there's this little PM and AM button on there. <laughs> Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. But you stayed under the speed limit, right? Because you're a law-abiding citizen. I reserve the right to... <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> you know, we're looking at, at uh, the resurrection today, so we, we look at one of the scriptures today that uh, I just... I just love looking at this uh, scripture here in, 
in uh, Luke 24 and uh, the, the other scriptures of the women who went to the tomb that morning. So we're going to kind of spend a little bit of time there. Uh, so Luke 24 and just the first five verses today. On that first day of the week, very early in the morning, they, their alarm must have worked. <laughs> very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about this, wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. This is the word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> Would you pray with me? Lord, as we turn to your word today, I love the image that we created this morning by taking an old rugged cross, a symbol of death and crucifixion and pain and suffering, and we turn it into a thing of beauty. And that's exactly what you do with us, Lord. You turn us into something remarkable, the creation that you have intended us to be. So Lord, help us to grow closer to you through your word today. Speak through me and move me aside if need be that your word might be heard. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, rumors persist. You, you know, sometimes you could call it fake news. What am I talking about? Oh, you know, the news of the premature passing of people. Uh, it happens frequently if you think about it. Some of these folks, uh, however, who have been declared dead, uh, take issue with that because they believe themselves to be fully and completely alive and, and well, thank you very much. Some people like Pope John Paul II, P.T. Barnum, Mark Twain, Barbara Bush, George H.W. Bush, Fidel Castro, Jackie Chan, Chevy Chase, Hillary Clinton, Sean Connery, Celine Dion, Kirk Douglas, Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth II, Zsa Zsa Gabor, Bob Hope, Michael Jordan, Jerry Lee Lewis, Nelson Mandela, Joe Montana, Britney Spears, Sylvester Stallone, and the list goes on. Lots of people have been declared dead long before their bodies quit working. Exactly, uh, uh, you know, the, and of course Mark Twain had the, had the most eloquent response, I think, of any of them. The report of my death was an exaggeration. <laughs> it was exactly 50 years ago that a rumor began to fly around the world that Paul is dead. Now, some of you are too old to remember Paul. Most of us are young enough to remember Paul. Uh, the year was 1969, and many people were convinced that rock star Paul McCartney had died. He had died in 1966 and been replaced with a lookalike. Music fans played, some of you remember this, played a song from the White Album backwards and heard the message, Turn Me On, Dead Man. They listened to the song Strawberry Fields Forever and thought they heard John Lennon say, I buried Paul. On the uh, cover of Abbey Road album, the four Beatles are crossing the street in what looks like a funeral procession. John Lennon dressed in white. Like a heavenly figure, Ringo, Ringo Starr in black is supposed to be the undertaker, and George Harrison in denim is the gravedigger. And then Paul McCartney, barefoot, and out of step with the others. Yeah, the Beatles press office quickly issued statements denying the rumor, saying it was a load of old rubbish. Paul was still very much alive, not killed in a car accident in 1966 after an argument with his fellow Beatles. The Beatles had not replaced him with an orphan from Edinburgh, as had been speculated. And Britain, I see a few of you know the story, yeah and Britain's security service M MI5 had not orchestrated the plot out of concern for McCartney's death would do to his fans. Is Paul dead? 
not according to the Beatles press office and not according to Paul McCartney himself. In an interview, McCartney said to the BBC, if the conclusion that you reach is that I'm dead, you're wrong, I'm very much alive and living in Scotland, thank you very much. Ah, the rumors of someone's death. It wasn't much of a rumor when the women went to the tomb, was it? They expected to find Jesus' body. Some, by our calendars, some two days later. Friday, the disciples fled and they hid. Joseph from Arimathea, along with some other help, placed Jesus' body into that tomb. Was he really dead? Had he just fainted from thirst and the stress of the sacrifice and the crucifixion? Was there a conspiracy afoot? What really happened? You know, unlike today, where death often occurs under the watchful eye of dedicated medical staff and somewhat sterile environments and where we are often insulated from the process of the end of life. People in the first century were well acquainted with death and dying. Life was shorter. Life was harder. Violence was prevalent. Jesus was dead. He died on a cross. There was no doubt the Roman soldiers didn't even have to break his legs to hasten his death. The spear that pierced his side revealed water separated from the plasma. This was not fake news or just a rumor. There was no lookalike for Mary. Mother of Jesus was also present at the crucifixion. Probably just after sunrise, before the heat of the day took over, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, mother of James, also called, sometimes called Mary Salome, made her, their way to the tomb, wondering all the way how they were even going to get the stone away from the entrance to get inside. Mary, you might remember, was the one who came to Jesus asking if her sons could sit at the, on either side of Jesus in the kingdom. Mother, Mary of James and John, sons of thunder, married to Zebedee. She must have been quite a strong woman with boys like that. There were probably a few other women along as well. It was work that required help. Doesn't sound like women on their way to a conspiracy, does it? Now we all fit life into a certain frame, don't we? We have our image of what life should look like. And we like to keep things nice and orderly, don't we? We like to know, and I'm sorry you have to look at what's inside the frame. <laughs> that was not my intent. That frame we use to measure and evalu evaluate the world around us. And when something doesn't fit in that frame, we find ourselves disrupted. Things don't fit like they should, and when you're on your way to anoint a dead body, News of a living person doesn't fit into that frame, does it, for anybody? I'm excited that we share the resurrection with Joanna and Mary Magdalene and Mary Salome. This discovery of an empty tomb. If a picture is worth a thousand words and if the picture doesn't fit the frame, Maybe we need to expand the frame just a little bit. You know, have a bigger picture of what the world is and what God is doing in the midst of it. Throughout his three-year ministry, Jesus exceeded all the expectations of people around him. Think about it for a bit. He healed people on the Sabbath. He touched the untouchable. He healed and honored the discarded ones of the culture. He blessed those with, with faith like the Roman centurion who came out of his faith in God to ask for healing for a servant. He fed the multitude with five loaves and two fish. He transformed water into wine, raised a son, a daughter, and, a, and Lazarus all from the dead. 
Not the leper, not the unclean, not the possessed, not the blind, not the demon possessed, not blind Bartimaeus, not a bad day of fishing, not even a severed ear, or even a storm on the ocean. None of these things stopped Jesus from exceeding our expectations. Not even a cross. Few deaths could be as ugly as death on a cross. But the tomb isn't the end of the story. And that's what makes our faith unique. Jesus exceeds our expectations, and he's still doing it. Or are you hoping too small? Is your frame too small to see God's image or who you really are? Do you think you're beyond hope, beyond forgiveness, beyond freedom? I've talked with people who believe that, who actually said to me, you, you know, I, I'm just hopeless. I'm beyond hope. I'm beyond forgiving. There's no way God could forgive me. And sadly, they can't see this gift of freedom that God gave us on the cross. Bart Millard is the lead singer of the contemporary Christian music group Mercy Me. After his father died, he wrote a song called I Can Only Imagine, which explores what heaven might be like. What the song doesn't reveal, however, is that Arthur Millard beat his son two and three times a week. Bart grew to hate his father and they were estranged. Many years later, Arthur came to know Jesus and it transformed his life. It changed him completely, even though he had developed terminal cancer. Bart finally decided to give his father a second chance at, the re at a relationship. Bart said, my dad was a monster and I saw God transform him. Their story was painful and it took a terminal illness for them to bring the two back together again. But the end of the story is a resurrection and including a reconciliation of father and son. And then it resulted in the creation of this beautiful song, I can only imagine, that is blessed and given hope to millions of people. We believe Jesus is alive and sitting at the right hand of God the Father. I know he's alive because he lives in me. I know he's alive because I see him in you. I see him alive in many of you as you do your daily work, as you bless others, as you lend a hand and an ear, as you give comfort and mercy and compassion to others. Jesus said, I live in me, and I will live in you. That's an important verse for us. Because Jesus doesn't say, well, if you spend some time with me, I might, I might consider giving you some grace and forgiveness. Lydia, if you spend some time with me, maybe, maybe uh, I'll, I'll forgive you. You know, maybe. He doesn't say that, does he? Thank God he doesn't say that. He says, if you live in me, I will live in you. You have freedom if you live in Christ. Thanks be to God for that. Amen? Amen. Jesus isn't dead. He's alive. Do you need a transformation? Have you lost hope? Maybe your frame is way way too small and you need a big bigger frame maybe you're hoping too small see we have a big God we can hope big we can hope really big Jesus died on a cross on Friday three days later he was back at it exceeding our expectations 
Thanks be to God for that. He exceeds all expectations. He will give you life anew, renew your life, give you life. Amen? Amen. 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 And I really hope and pray that if you're struggling and looking for something new, that you give Jesus a chance. And maybe it just means doing it once again. You see, we, we come and go, don't we, in a, in a cycle. Some days we're close to God, and then other days we think we're just fine. We don't need him today. I'm doing just fine today, thank you very much. God, you can sit in the back seat today. I'm driving. And that's usually when I find out I need him the most. So I hope, I hope you give him a chance to take back over and guide your life. And it's a great day to share in Holy Communion, isn't it? You know, and it, and it really bookends this Easter season because we start on Holy Thursday with, uh, with the Passover, the First Supper, and then we go through all of that struggle, and now it's Easter morning, and so we can share once more in Holy Communion with the risen Christ. We can share and celebrate that this bread that we're about to break together is the bread of life. That the cup we share is the cup of freedom, the cup of grace, Christ's blood poured out for us. It's, it takes on a whole new meaning, amen? It's all new for us today. And so let us share in communion today. After worship, I'm, if there's a couple of guys who would carefully take the cross over to the sanctuary, I would be eternally grateful because we're going we're to use this beautiful cross two more times uh, in worship today, and, and it's going to grace our sanctuary. The broken bread reminds us that Christ was broken for us. And yet, this living bread is for us. New life in Christ Jesus. And the cup reminds us of his spilled blood on the cross. But it's not the end of the story. Because when he walked out of the tomb, this, this grace, this cup of unending grace is ours forever. And so we share not only in Christ's suffering, but in his new life. And so take this cup and this bread, Lord Jesus, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we, your people, renewed and redeemed, freed from chains of sin and slavery, freed from addictions, freed from all of the things that separate us from you, that we might be your people, Lord. Fill us again. Renew us once more this Easter Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to come in quiet as you share in communion. And if you wish to just spend a moment in front of the cross, and then if a couple of guys would take that cross, I would be grateful. God bless. <laughs>